Check out my new studio. I have a hay fever and let's make photos better. First of all, I hope that you're all staying safe out there. I may not have anything serious, but man, hay fever sucks. It is one of those things that people without hay fever will never just quite understand. Shut up about hay fever, James, and let's talk about selecting some stuff in Photoshop. Selecting things in Photoshop is usually one of the most important parts of Photoshop because it tells Photoshop what needs to be adjusted and how much of it needs to be adjusted. The primary use for selections is for making masks that will control how much of a layer is visible. Say you want only to see my pretty face. So we make a mask right here, or here, or over here. In Photoshop, this mask will look more like this, but we'll get back to that later. So let's say that you got a freezing model because you're a horrible person and you will willing to do anything for the sake of art. Now their skin is turning a bit blue on the pictures and you want to make it look like this was not the second coming of the Lich King when you were shooting this picture. In order to do that, we need to pump a bit of color back in her skin. So one way to add color to an image is by creating an adjustment layer and one of them could be the color balance one. So let's get some color back into her skin and the way to do that is by using an adjustment layer. So we go in here and we go to color balance. All right, cool. So now, we try to make a little bit more yellow and a little bit more red. However, now obviously it looks like everything is getting a bit of color, which could sometimes be fine. But in this case, we want to keep it a bit more about just her skin. This is why we have the mask. Somebody stop me! Nope, not that one. This one. Right now it is white, which means that everything is visible. All the colors are spilling out in the entire image. But for now, let's try to make it black instead. We do that by inverting the mask to make it black. We can do that by holding Control or Command and I. Cool. We can now see that there is no color in the image. We want to have some of the adjustment back on the subject. So in order to do that, we're going to add in some white. We can do that by clicking B, getting our brush up, and then we can just color in some of that lovely color on her. All right, well, that's gonna give us a new problem unless we're trying to recreate this guy. Obviously, it's not confined to her skin. Now, unless you wanna just slowly start freaking dotting in everything one by one, I mean, you could do it, but for me, uh, Photoshop is about being effective with your time because there are so many things you wanna try all the time, so it's so important that things are fluent easy and fast so you feel more in control and you also just enjoy your time with Photoshop. This is where selections comes into the picture. As I said before, easy does it and for me the quick selection tool is definitely one of the easiest thing. I mean this baby is great. I'm not a believer of magic but I'd say that the quick selection tool comes pretty close. What quick selection tool does is it tries to kind of calculate what it thinks that you're trying to select by a bunch of different algorithms that I obviously am not smart enough to explain. The quick selection tool can be found right up here. It's this little guy. If you can't find it, just right click it and it'll show it. Normally people used magic wand tool back in the days, which is something that would select only the color uh, of, of an image. But with the quick selection tool, it also calculates patterns. It calculates just objects in general. It's amazing. So if we wanted to use it on our beautiful model, we just simply click it and we just drag across pretty much her face. Slam, face selected. We wanna uh, include all the skin, so we're just gonna keep on selecting. And uh, because of the tonality difference between her skin and everything else, Photoshop is just like, I got it. If you accidentally select too much, what you can do is you can just hold Alt or Options and it'll bring out this little minus instead, which will subtract from your selection instead. So for example, her eyes, we definitely want her eyes to be not selected because we don't want those to get warmer. Uh, so we're just gonna hold Alt and we're just gonna quickly, oh, that's too much. See, sometimes it messes up a little bit, but that's why you can just quickly release Alt or Option and it'll just add, add it back in. I mean, it, it cannot get easier than this. You'll see that it's not completely uh, perfect just yet, but I'll get to that in a few. We also don't want her lips and especially her teeth to be affected by this. Sometimes lips doesn't matter, but you know, might as well have everything in control. 
All right, so it might look like it's doing its job right now and you're all done, but the edges are very, very harsh. Let me just demonstrate. We're gonna go to something called Select and Mask, which is right here in the top. We click it and yes, this may be your worst nightmare ever. It's kind of like art, isn't it? It's like a the digital scream or something. I like it. But for now, let's try to color in some of these parts that we know we don't want included. And then we're gonna zoom out here and we're gonna increase the radius. The radius, much like the quick selection tool, is gonna try to calculate one more time what it thinks maybe you'll be trying to select and then try to feather and ease out the, edge, the edges a little bit. So we're just gonna increase that a bit until it kinda makes sense. Yeah, it seems okay. We're just gonna click okay. And boom, we have a really fun mask. Now our mask is complete. So because we have something selected, when we make an adjustment layer now, Photoshop is gonna apply that selection and create a mask out of it automatically. So that's, that's just brilliant. We're just gonna go down here again to our adjustments and we're gonna create the color balance layer one more time. This time, if I hold Alt or Options just to see our mask and click on the mask, we'll see that it looks pretty much like her face. So now if we go into our color balance and we start messing around with it, what you'll see is that it will only be affecting her skin. Beautiful. We'll give her a bit of yellow. I think that's in the skin and a bit of red. And suddenly we're looking at a different woman altogether. Oh, a bit much, I think. It's getting a bit weird, but definitely some of the opposite colors of blue, which is yellow. Now, the really cool thing about this is that because we now have a mask, we can copy that mask and just keep on freaking boosting them adjustment layers out. So if we want to change, for example, the tonality of our skin, we'll just go in here and hold control or command and we'll just click on the mask one more time and you'll see this little tiny box pop up. We click it and boom, we got the same mask as before. So as soon as we start making one more adjustment layer, and we can maybe go for curves or we can go for levels. I just go for levels. When you start messing around with this now, you can start changing the brightness of her skin, which is sometimes really, really, really useful. Just give it a bit of a luminance. We can even increase the highlights maybe a bit, decrease the overall, maybe even more here. Maybe shadows, no. Going back here. All right, let's see what we did. We're just gonna click the visibility icon here to see what we actually did. And already we got a lot more dimensions, a lot more depths, and a lot more dynamics in our image just by doing that alone. The reason I'm working like this is because it gives you so much control that you can start experimenting. Normally someone could get discouraged from experimenting if they feel like it's gonna be too much work, but when you have something as simple as this, it becomes really easy for you to try out something new and then broaden your skill set by keep on pushing yourself and finding new ways to do things and new ways to edit images. Let's say I wanna change your skin color completely. Is that, is that ethical? Can you do that? Oh well. We go in. Command or Control, click on the mask. Let's make another adjustment layer, but this time we'll go for Hue and Saturation, which is basically color tones, I guess. Now we can do everything. Let's go to Colorize, clickety click. Now with Colorize up, I can see that we missed a few spots with the quick selection tool, but you can manually fix things by going in. Be sure that you've clicked on the specific mask that you're trying to edit. We go out again and now we just click our brush as before on B. We make sure that our colors are white and black. And if you want something to be visible, we just click on it with our lovely brush. I can see that her eyes are a bit off. So we just click X to swap the colors over here. You can see them swap link. And then we just remove it from her eyes. Easy does it over here as well. And just as a little side note, if you want to copy the mask to another adjustment, you just hold your Alt or Option and you just drag it down. Boom. Now we have control. You want to make her into a Smurf? Easy. Swap it over to blue. Boom. Smurf. You want to make her into Gamora? Easy. Boom. Gamora. I mean, if you don't feel like a god by now, I, I don't know what to do anymore. 
there is so much more that you can do with selections and masks and i would love to go into that in my video i'll be posting next week it'll probably be the best video on youtube maybe even in the world if you want more tutorials about how to do complicated selections like fur and hair you can just join my patreon right here or maybe here you'll get tons of great material you'll get live sessions for retouching live shoots you'll get photoshop files that you can just play around with all of these things are just here to get you one step closer to becoming an amazing photographer until next time